Hello and welcome to Sisyphus Crane and Rigging. This is part two of the Pusillier Mechanism. Hello, this is Mr. Bix. My last video, Pusillier Part 1, about a Pusillier Mechanism for a moving ball ramp and about what it is, about what inspired it, plus some loony rambling about its history, didn't talk much about how I built it or how it is controlled and powered and so on. In the Pusillier Part 1 video, I talked about how the joints need to keep the device upright and rigid. Well, I was worried enough that I started with yoke-style joints like these. A bit overkill, I think, now, although they look pretty cool. I'll use something like these for the SARS device. Okay, different day, different sound recording. I, had, <laughs> I left off talking about the SARS device. That's a different kind of linear motion device that I intend to try to incorporate and stay tuned for that, but basically it's, it's a hinge-based linear motion system. I'm going to make another ramp and maybe they'll intersect. We'll see how that goes. The direction of the moving segment of that ramp with a double pusillier system is dependent on you know various factors, uh, the geometry of how you set it up. If the two top mounting points of that ramp are at a certain distance apart, then the base elements, that is mainly the pivot points, need to be that same distance apart. In this case it's four inches. If the ramp is to move at a fixed angle, linear to the direction in which the ramp is mounted, those rails are at an angle of 7.5 degrees in this case, and in order for them to move in that fixed direction, you have to mount the bases so that the pivot points, the bottom two pivot points, are not vertical to each other but at an angle of matching the angle that you wish the ramp to go in. So you can see how I modeled it here without that angle being in there and you can see what happens to the ramp. It moves in a parallel motion but it doesn't move longitudinal to the axis of the ramp, to the, to the rails. I made a model on the computer back in 2015. I got back to it in 2023. I checked the joints so they would work, like I described, and made sure there was no crashes in SolidWorks. You have to double check that it doesn't have intersections and so on. And then I made it all so that the links would accept bronze oil light bushings. The bushings go in when the parts get finished after anodizing. Right now, the pockets aren't even there. They're not even machined in. And I milled the ramp, uh, the parts, the usual way on the mill. You can screw them down through the two holes, the two pivot holes, do profiles around them. I made two full sets. I still need to make a fourth vertical link that doesn't have an actuator mounting hole, as you can see here. The ramp is a little bit crude for now, but the idea is to silver solder it all together with rails uh, on the brass blocks or sheet metal blocks. I've got some laser cut thin sheet metal. They, they weld up, they solder up pretty good with silver solder. But my mini torch needed new tubing. It wasn't working when I made this. And the original stuff was latex rubber and over the years it has turned into something that looks like cheese. Shout out to the Sugar Hill Gang. Link below, by the way. I used a Smith Little Torch, also link below. And they're really good for this type of small work. Uh, small flame, very hot. Anyway, it's old and expensive to get new tubing for those. I bought some, but I think I'll need to make extensions or buy more because it's only six feet long, and honestly, that is not long enough. You're tied too close to the tanks. So it got built with temporary ramps, and now I need to get the ball rolling down it automatically, get the timing and programming started. The goal is to have the ramp arrive just in time to catch the ball, then move back with the ball on it to meet the next ramp, uh, to provide a continuous ramp for the ball to go down, gaps and all. On the temporary ramp that feeds the moving ramp is a sensor that tests if a ball is on the way. 
I'm using an opto sensor. It's a TT Electronics Photologic OPB 930 slotted optical switch. It's flagged by a moving lever that the ball presses when it goes over it. The ramp is driven by a crank. Uh, it's a crank link and I used a disc type wheel with a pin for actuating the switches that knows that tell it when it's at the forward position or the back position. Uh, it runs on 12 volts DC. There's lots of motors out there. It may change all the motor and crank and all that stuff and the ramps. They're all temporary until I get this put into the actual Kineticon. The motor is driven from a separate power supply. Here's a quick rundown of the Arduino code. The logic is that when you power the thing up, the ramp goes to the backmost position. It hits the switch and stops there regardless of what position it was in when it stopped. Then the opto is flagged by a ball going over that that flag, that, that lever that uh, flags the opto. That input to the Arduino says, oh, run the motor to the forward stop position of, you know, the, the motor position forward stop switch. It runs to that position, stops, and then there's a timeout on it that's settable in the programming. I set that for however many milliseconds works, and then when it times out, then it continues, it turns back on and runs to the backmost position until it hits that switch and stops again and rests and waits there until the opto flag is run again. That way you can put ball after ball through it and it always moves in order to catch the ball. My coding is rough at best. I'm not even sure how the timer works, but I'll figure it out. <laughs> Next I have to write a, uh, to code up a FSM, finite state machine, to run these things. It gets pretty dry, so I'll leave it to your imagination. But anyway, there's a lot of help online for Arduinos, and I'm sure I'll be talking about them more later. And now you are, you are witnessing a montage of how the parts were assembled. And that's going to wrap it up for this video. And while this plays, here is some super chill music to go with it. Let me know how you like this tune, and thanks for watching. Thank you.